I will show you today how I do shutter speed testing using my Nikon DSLR. Uh, this is the DSLR. I put it on manual since there is a manual Nikon lens up front, otherwise it will not fire. And I uh, put the ISO on 100 and the shutter speed on 3 seconds. So why do I do this? Now that I have this with the, uh, the, the lens is by the way all the way on infinity with the diaphragm all the way open. So this is the camera I'm going to use to test the shutter speed of another camera. The camera under test is this Leica CL. I have attached a cheap Industar lens uh, on the front of it. I also uh, focus this lens on infinity and I open up the aperture, aperture all the way. So how are we going to do the test now? I have removed the little, uh, the little window here at the back because I need to be able to provide a light source in this area here. As a light source, we will be using this mobile phone. It's an old mobile phone, but it's a small one, which makes it easier to work with. And I have disabled the automatic rotation and I have uh, put the screen on the maximum luminosity and I have uh, made sure that it will not turn off during the test. You could also install a flashlight application to avoid having this text in the image, but uh, I don't really mind. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fire this camera on a shutter speed of three seconds. During the opening of this shutter speed, we're going to fire this camera on a shutter speed which is under test. Today, this is one thousandth of a second. And we'll make it like this. And as a uh, light source, we will be using this mobile phone. So first I need to cut the shutter, of course, it's already cooked. So I put my mobile phone here, I fire this camera, 3 seconds. Within the 3 seconds I have fired that camera, and this camera recorded the exposure that I have on here. So this is what we have under test now. Now as a reference, we're going to do the same thing, but the other way around, we will put this camera on bulb mode, the camera under test. We will use the DSLR and we will put it on one thousandth of a second. This one keeps rotating. So we'll put this one on one thousandth of a second. I will now do the same thing, only we will use The same light source will now fire the Leica. So we provide the same light source towards the sensor, only there is now a shutter in the digital camera and not the shutter in the Leica which is being used. So we'll now fire the shutter in the digital camera. And we have, and I, I release the shutter, and we have a second exposure, a second image. And this is the reference image. Now what are we going to do? We're going to look at these images. This is the image which is uh, having the luminosity. The other image will also need to have in case the shutter speed of 1000 on the Leica is accurate because I assume the new Nikon will be very accurate because it, digitally, it is digitally timed. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull this image into Photoshop we're going to determine the average luminosity of this image. I usually take a square in here and then I average it out. I have a little uh, action in Photoshop that does this. And then the previous picture, you see this is a bit brighter. Uh, you see this already uh, just by, by looking at the images. Uh, I will do the same thing. Uh, my action and my, ma my, my, my automated action will take uh, the center part of this image, will average out the luminosity and that's why you should have the flashlight application and not just this text in the image because it will falsify the results. And then it will tell you how much longer because you obviously you can already see that the shutter speed of 1000 on the Leica as it is today is a bit too long uh, to be comparable to this exposure. Um, and then you will see the difference between the two. And after that, I can adjust it using the, where is it in this camera, using the shutter uh, curtain tension here, and I will adjust it accordingly to make sure this shutter speed is all okay. How do I do it normally? Uh, well, I just uh, do it all in a series. I put this camera on uh, three seconds, and I fire this repeatedly on 1,000 
one five hundred, I change it one two fifty, I fire it, I fire it, I fire it. So then I in about one or two minutes time, I can make all of the reference exposures with this camera, all of the test exposures with that camera, and in my Photoshop action, I immediately see the whole row of results, and I can quickly see what shutter speeds are okay, what shutter speeds are not okay. An added advantage is that you can also see in this image you see the whole sensor. And that's why I used a wide angle lens so that I can go a bit wider than this lens. This lens is a 50 or a 58 millimeter. This lens is a 35 millimeter. So I'm doing this to be able to see the whole area of the film gate here. And why do I want to see the whole area? Because this is a vertically traveling shutter. I will want to compare the exposure at the bottom here and at the top there. So I will need to make sure that the bottom and top are exposed similarly and I will also be able to identify things like shutter bounce because if my first curtain will be bouncing I will be having a uh, wait a minute this is uh, at the bottom I will at this at the top here I will have a darker band when my second curtain is bouncing I will have a lighter band here at the top and this way I can adjust and repair all of my focal plane shutters